Let's go ahead with our hymn before our offering time. So if our ushers will be ready back there in just a few minutes before our offering. Our song is number 210. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. There's four verses, and we'll do all four of these and then have our morning offering time. pray, dear Lord, that you would give comfort to each one of us and that you would give compassion to each one of us, dear Lord, that we might reach out and do the things that you would have us to do to, to help, to give a kind word, to give an encouraging word, to give a message of hope and faith, dear Lord, so that we would have, have healing, both physically, mentally, and emotionally, dear Lord, and that you would help us all, dear we need to help each other and be here for each other. And we, dear Lord, we pray that you would help us to understand that in a, in a strong way. And it wouldn't be just lip service, but it would be a thing that would be uh, in our hearts that we would reach out to each other for strength, to know and to feel your strength, dear Lord. We want to thank you for every blessing you give us, dear Lord, because you do so much for us. Help us to always be grateful for everything you give us. Help us to never take anything you give us for granted. We thank you most of all, dear Lord, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to save us from our sins. 
hear what we pray today is as school starts this week, we already have some uh, young people in school, but as our regular school year starts this week, we pray that you'd watch after these young folks as they go into the school, that you would give their teachers wisdom, dear Lord, and give them compassion so that they would help these children to become everything that they can be. But watch after these young people and help them and when they go out into the world, dear Lord, that they would know you as their Savior and that they would be able to carry your word into a lost world. Again, thank you for everything you do for us. Bless these tithes and offerings. They need to be used for your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
life is a life is a made up of good news and bad news. And, uh, I, uh, well, you'll know that doesn't mean anything, but I'm wrong with you anyway. I've, I've spoken about the bad news. I do think we need to acknowledge the fact that this week that God blessed us with good news. Lee had some very extensive tests at CMC in Charlotte on Wednesday and he came forth with a good report. So we rejoice in that. The other wasn't good news. And... Uh, <laughs> better gifts that God gave me is a gift of empathy and uh, I'm glad for it sometimes it, sometimes it's tough I uh, <laughs> I had a lot to say this morning and I'm not going to get around to saying all of it, but uh, I'm going to read some scripture. In fact, I'm going to read a goodly portion of scripture this morning, and that's how I had planned it, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm reading it from the today's Living Bible because we're talking about our young people today, but this this passage in Ecclesiastes beginning with the end of chapter 11 and going through chapter 12. It's not only application to young people, it's got a lot of application to us older folks. And so if you're using another translation, you're going to see some words a little differently, but I've read them in both, and this is what I chose to do this morning. Beginning in the latter part of chapter 11 of Ecclesiastes, and you know you know that the wisest man who ever lived wrote Ecclesiastes and, and uh, Proverbs. And uh, there are 31 chapters in Proverbs. And somebody suggested one time years ago, I heard him suggest it would be wise for all of us to read a chapter a day out of Proverbs. And uh, it's got so much, so much uh, food for thought for every day. But... Uh, the wise man said, just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, <laughs> we can't. Now listen to this. You cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. That's powerful. It's very powerful. Be wise to take that. To when people live to be very old, let them rejoice in every day of life, it's underlined in my Bible. I don't think I ever get up in the morning that I don't say this is the day the Lord has made. I can rejoice and be glad in it. Every day that I live, and particularly as I grow older, I'm very conscious that I live my life because God wills it to be so. But let them also remember there will be many dark days. Those of us who are older can certainly identify with that, can't we? Everything still to come is meaningless, the wise man said. Young people, young people especially, listen now. It's wonderful to be young. Some of us can hardly remember that. <laughs> Enjoy every minute of it, young people. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in. But listen, this is not only true for young people, it's true for all of us. Remember... You must give an account to God for everything you do. Refuse to worry. Keep your body healthy. Stay away from alcohol, drugs, and I'll mention that again a little later, but uh, bears mentioning many times today. Remember that youth with a whole life before you is meaningless. 
Don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth because before you grow old and say life is not pleasant anymore. Remember him before the light of the sun, moon, and stars is dim to your old eyes. Uh, any, any senior could stand this morning and give testimony to the truth of that. And rain clouds continually darken your sky. A friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine of many years, called me some time ago, and he's retired, lives in Anderson. He said, Ray, they call these the golden years, but he said, I haven't found the gold yet. <laughs> I said, I identify with you, devil. Re remember him before your legs, the guards of your house start to tremble. <laughs> Before your shoulders, the strong man stoop. Remember him before your teeth. Your few remaining servants stop grinding, and before your eyes, the women looking through the windows are see dimly. Remember him before the door to life's opportunities is closed and the sound of work fades. Now you rise at the first chipping of the birds, but then all their sound will grow faint. Don't I know? Let me drop on down here. Remember your creator while you're young before the silver cord of life snaps and the golden bowl is broken. Don't wait until the water jar is smashed at the spring and the pulley is broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth and the spirit will return to God who gave. The words of the wise dropping on down in 12 for sake of time. The words of the wise are like cattle prods, painful but helpful. Their collected sayings are like a nail-studded stick with which a shepherd drives a sheep. But my child, let me give you some further advice. Be careful. For writing books is endless and much study wears you out. That's the whole story. Here it is for all of us. My final conclusion, the wise man said, fear God and obey his commands for this is everyone's duty. God will judge us, all of us, for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether it's good or whether it's bad. You've heard it many times. These are the best of times and the worst of times. And uh, I believe there, that, that statement of many years ago is still applicable today. Best of times because God's giving us opportunities today that we would not have would not have had some years ago. Best of times because knowledge is increasing with such, so rapidly. Knowledge has brought blessing, but it's brought cursing. You see, you see the thing about knowledge, if you miss everything else, please hear this. It depends upon whose hands that knowledge is placed. Did you hear me? It depends upon whose hands that knowledge is placed. As I was, as I was studying and preparing this, I could not help but think of an experience some years ago that Mary and I had. I, we were living over in the upper part of the state. Got a telephone call one evening it was, uh, weather was very inclement, heavy snows. That Mary's dad, who was a patient at Piedmont, may not make it through the night. Despite the weather, we, we get, got on 85, slid our way to Rock Hill after quite a few hours. They were preparing to transfer her dad from Piedmont to... Uh, Charlotte. His esophagus was bleeding terribly. Doctors in Rock Hill didn't give him much hope. Fortunately, they had uh, made contact with a doctor in Charlotte, and we got there, and this young doctor, it, see, God's amazing. This young doctor had just completed studying how to apply a laser to the type of bleeding that he had. 
He was the only doctor in Charlotte. And uh, I never shall forget what he said, and that made me, I thought about that when I was preparing this sermon. He said, the same laser that I am about to use to stop Mr. Sims bleeding is the same kind of laser that can be used to shoot a plane out of the air. He said, it's a matter of whose hands it's in. Be in the hands of someone for good, it can be in the hands of someone evil. You take our own current time. We're, I thought about this this week also. We're, and those of us who are older, young people can, I think that we're living today in somewhat like the 60s that some of us lived in. The Cold War, y'all remember the Cold How many of you remember the Cold War? We weren't sure what the Russians were going to do. And some of you may have had friends who built uh, underground bomb shelters. Every time I go from Chester over to Clinton to visit our son out there in the middle of the country, in the middle of nowhere, I can see a, where some folks had built a bum shelter in the side of the hills. I thought, oh, what good would that have done had somebody dropped a bomb? There are days of blessing, there are days of cursing. And the only way to ensure that knowledge is used to man's good is to apply it with the wisdom granted by God. I've got so many notes here, I'm going to have to skip through them, so just Give me just, just a moment. I've got, to, I've got a bunch of tidbits this morning I want to share with everybody, but I'm not sure I'm going to get around to getting to them. There are three things that every person needs, and especially young people need today. The first thing, first thing that every person needs is salvation. That's not only true of young people, that's true of anybody here this morning who does not have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. You may be saying this morning, Pastor, why do I need salvation? Because the only way that life is going to come out good depends upon what you do with Jesus. What you do with Jesus, young people, is going to determine how life eventually turns out. You can accept that. You can reject it. You can look at me as an old fogey. But I'm telling you, after 78 years of living, I'm convinced the only answer to life is Jesus. The only answer. Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Had I not received Jesus into my life, I wouldn't be here this morning. I would probably already be in hell. Most of you would be honest this morning. You would say the same thing. Without Jesus, I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be in hell. Every day I live, I give God thanks for salvation in Jesus Christ. Not only do you need salvation so that you can live the kind of life that is meaningful and purposeful, you need salvation because that determines where you spend eternity. Too few people, too few people today give much thought to life after death, and yet you should. Well, you're listening to me. Some of you are older, and you're as lost as a goose, and you're on your way to hell. What you do with Jesus is going to depend upon where you spend eternity. Every time our children get together today, and I'm very thankful they're, they're all going to be here this afternoon. I rarely get with my children that I don't remind them that mom and dad are going soon <laughs> to our eternal abode. And the one thing I want more than anything in the world is to know that my children, my grandchildren, are going to follow close behind me. Amen. I want to know that. That's why before I get out of bed almost every morning, the first thing I do is I pray for the salvation of my children and grandchildren who don't know Jesus. Get all the education in the world. They can get the best of jobs. They can live the finest of life here on this earth. But unless they know Jesus, they're going to spend eternity in hell. They need salvation. I must hurry because you see they need wisdom. 
some people confuse wisdom and knowledge. There is a difference. Knowledge is information that we gain in this world and is increasing with such rapidity. But wisdom is what God gives us to enable us to use the knowledge so that we might be a beneficial person in society. And the wisdom comes only from God. James said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask God who giveth all men liberally. Third thing, very quickly, I wish I had an hour on the wisdom part. Solomon certainly gives us some good food for thought. Third thing you must have is determination. You must be determined. Self-determination guided by the hand of God can accomplish much. Self-determination guided by the hand of God can accomplish much. Paul said, I'm determined to know nothing among you save Jesus and him crucified. I think about that little chorus we sing sometimes, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look fully in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Paul said, I'm determined to press toward the mark of the prize of high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Every time I think about the grace of God and and salvation and self-determination, I think about my own life. And that's one thing that rarely does a week pass by that God doesn't give me the opportunity to give a testimony on what the grace of God and self-determination can do. I deal with a lot, 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 too far too many young people whose lives are in shambles. And I try to tell them that with the, by the, with the help of God they can overcome those terrible circumstances in which they find themselves living. Determine that you live, live your life God's way. Not your way, not somebody else's way. Determine that you live your life God's way. I'm going to give you some tidbits to put all this together. And I can't, I'll have to pick and choose. I've got about <laughs> six pages of them. That Part of them came from Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Part of them came from other sources. Listen to this part very carefully. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Young people, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall wreck thy paths. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his glory and all these things shall be added unto you. Paul said, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Those are all scriptural. Next one's a bumper sticker I read several years ago. He who has the most toys wins. <laughs> now, that couldn't be further from the truth. That's a lie hatched in hell, and yet there are a lot of people who live their lives accumulating toys, and they think they're going to produce a sense of uh, peace and joy in their heart. I, I could not help but think as I was putting that particular one down, I have personally known two very professional people in the city of Rock Hill in the last year who had every kind of toy you could imagine having. If they didn't have it, they had the money to buy it. Their families are in shambles and their children are emotional wrecks. And they had all the toys you could possibly gain. Toys don't produce happiness, young people. Listen to me. If you miss everything else, don't miss, don't miss this. Toys do not bring happiness happiness things cannot produce what only God can produce in us submit yourselves to God resist the devil and he will flee from you pride goeth before fall you'll not always be able to choose your circumstances someone else will choose them for you oftentimes you learned the lesson of the apostle Paul when he said I've learned in whatever state I know whether that was North Carolina or South Carolina Virginia whatever state you're in, to be content. No, Paul meant whether he was in prison, whether he was on a boat, whether he's preaching the gospel in, in Ephesus or Galatia or somewhere else. Whatever happened to Paul, he learned to accept it as being from the hand of God, and he was going to be content with it. Americans need to learn that lesson. It's a valuable lesson. If you don't learn that lesson in life, you're going to go through life I cannot imagine what you're going to face in life. A good name is better to be chosen than great riches. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. You'll always reap what you sow. 
sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. So if you don't remember anything, remember that sin will take you further than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you wish to stay, and it will cost you more than you want to pay. I love Proverbs 6 and 6, and I didn't give references to all of these. The wise man said, go to the ain't, the ain't thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. You know what that means? That means don't be lazy. There are a lot of young people today who are just flat dab lazy. They don't know how to work. They don't want to work. They aren't taught to work. And parents let them get by with that. Are you listening, parents? Give them jobs to do. Give them tasks to do and expect them to do it. You know, if they don't do it, just cut the supply line off. <laughs> when pride cometh, then cometh shame, wise men said. Wise men also said, he that trusteth in riches shall fail, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. A wise son or daughter heareth the instructions of his father. Young people hear that. We aren't as foolish as you think we are. <laughs> Haven't lived all these years without learning something. Haven't lived this long without knowing that uh, fools make a market sin. That's what's going on in our society today, the wise man said. He also said, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I love this one. A soft answer. Some of you need to hear this. A soft answer turneth away wrath. But gracious words stir up anger. Grievous words stir up anger. How much better, he said, is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than gold. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and are safe. And that's, let me read one more. <clears throat> Goes back to the one I read previously. He that is slothful or lazy in his work is kin to him that is a great waster. And there's a lot of truth in that. I would encourage you parents particularly uh, to encourage your children, encourage your grandchildren to read regularly from the book of Proverbs. There are three things we need. We need salvation, we need wisdom, we need self-determination, and with those things, God will bless us immensely. I want all the young people who are headed back to school, along with all those that work in the school system, to come down so I can have a word of prayer over you this morning. Please, if you're going to school, if you work in the school system in any capacity, please come and let us uh, have a word of prayer with you. We've got some teachers here. Aren't we blessed? God has given us a wonderful mission field, and we need to be faithful in carrying out our responsibilities as a church. We're blessed as a church, Father. We're blessed in the, in the fact that you have given to us what so many churches are missing today, and that is children and young people. I thank you for each one of them. Wish I could call each of, each of their names, Father. I thank you for those within our congregation this morning who are involved in the teaching of these young people in the school system. I pray that especially for them this year, I pray that you would give them not only knowledge but much wisdom from God. I pray that you'd give them a, a love that only Jesus could give them. I pray that you would give them a patience that can come only from you. And I pray you'd help these young people to open their minds and open their hearts to receive truth, knowledge. But I pray also that each of them would realize that to apply that knowledge in a way that's going to bless themselves and bless society, they must obtain wisdom from God. 
If there are any of these young people here this morning who do not have a saving relationship with Jesus, I pray, I pray, I pray. So important, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God in short order would bring conviction upon their heart that they might come to know Jesus. I pray for their families, for their parents. I pray for the grandparents because they too have a great responsibility in bringing these children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And Lord, give them a great school year. Bless them, keep them safe, keep them from harm, keep them from evil. Help them to walk in the ways of God and not in the ways of the world. Especially, Father, I pray that you would help them say no to alcohol and drugs, knowing that drugs is one of the great killers of society, of young people today. Father, help them keep their minds focused on you, realizing, Father, that one of the leading causes of death among young people today is suicide. So, Father, I pray that you would just bless them in a way that would cause them to trust you and and you, you could guide them in, in, in marvelous ways, Father. And Father, just bless us as we, as we fellowship together this afternoon. Father, I pray that you would just give them, uh, you would give us a good time in fellowship. And I pray that in Jesus' precious name and for Jesus' sake I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right, y'all can just stay, stay here. Uh, we're going downstairs and have a pizza party for everybody. I mean, literally everybody, all of you adults, are going to have pizza and and uh, we're going to have pizza, and then we're going to uh, going to have pizza and salad and dessert. And everybody, I beg all of you to stay because we've got plenty of pizza, plenty of plenty of everything to eat. And so I pray that you will stay with us. Uh, also, after that, young people, all the children, young people are going to receive a, a bag of school supplies donated by the church. There are two things I need to tell you about next week if I can keep my mind. Um, Michael will be back from his trip to Michigan, his summer there. Uh, Sharon flew up yesterday to drive back with him tomorrow. He'll be able to give us a report. And then next Sunday we're going to unveil some ideas, plans, how we might have the biggest mission offering we've ever received in our church. And you will want to hear that. Greg, let's sing our closing. I need to see the deacons just a minute after service, please. Let's stand together and sing, He is Lord, as we close our service.